Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to this second video on Bitwig. Today we're taking a look at the mixer so we can get the basic stuff out of the way so we can start diving deep. All right, um, so let's just go over here. This is how the mixer looks. Um, if you uh, start it up and you've got nothing extended, uh, you can extend sections of the mixer in Bitwig by clicking these little icons and we'll take a look at each mixer section. Uh, individually. But first of all, I'm going to show you how you can get to this screen. So hitting the tab key in Bitwig will um, bring you back and forth between the arrange page and uh, your mix page. So what I've got going here is a tiny loop. But first of all, I have to make sure that you guys can hear it as well. So I'll have to create a send to send it to OBS. This is also a nice opportunity to show you how to group tracks. So one thing I really miss in Reason is folder tracks and grouping. And in Bitwig, the arranger and the mixer, they work hand in hand. So I've selected multiple tracks here and then just hit uh, Control and G. G for group and it will create a group. And you can see it's also created a group for all these tracks. I'll just undo that and uh, show you from the mixer view real quick. So I've got all these tracks here select all of them by hitting the shift key then control G there's the group now um, I will need the send effects and I'll send it to OBS so what I'll do is I'll hit the send effect button over here it's the three dials and I've got a dial set up to OBS now you guys don't have to do this I'm only doing this so you guys can hear the music but um, in here are for our six tracks uh, now I'm going to hit this first button to open up the uh, little arranger. The second button makes the clips larger and smaller. And from here I can trigger different sections of this little loop that I've got laid out. So it starts off with a bit of a basic synth. Got a bit of a drum loop here. Got some hi-hats. Some percussion. And then also bass line. Of course, I should have triggered these in sync, but uh, let's just listen to the entire scene real quick. So yeah, groovy little house loop, threw that together for this video, and uh, we are going to do some changes to it. Now, first of all, let's take a look at the levels. I'll open up this big meter, and we can see, all right, they're all approaching the yellow, but uh, they're looking pretty good. So I'm just going to stop this here, because here's, here's where it gets interesting. This um, next button, the device chains, will show you what kind of devices you've got going on on that track. So let's take, for example, I'm going to hit the stop button over here. That will stop all clips from playback and reset my clip la uh, my launched clips. Um, so I can show you the individual elements. Let's take, for example, this uh, space gedoodle. And you can see it's a chain of devices. We've got um, some node transposition. We've got the arpeggiator, polymer, and an EQ, saturator. Goes through all that stuff, and it's in this little chain. And that chain goes into this track. Now these tracks work top to bottom, and uh, on the bottom it works left to right. So you can either click here and say add a peak limiter for whatever reason if you want to do that. Um, but you can also delete the peak limiter and say if you are mixing um, you could um, add it over here by clicking this little plus and throw in a peak limiter. And there you go, there it is. You can adjust the output to your liking or the input rather. And uh, that's how you add devices. I'm just gonna leave it at zero for now. Um, so yeah, that was the devices one. Now this next one that comes up, these are the ins and the outs. This is particularly interesting if you have an interface with multiple ins and outs. And um, I do, I happen to do. And uh, I'm very grateful for this opportunity to be able to demonstrate uh, the full potential of this very capable 
battle audio interface. No, all jokes aside, um, it comes with this feature called direct wire and that allows me to use virtual buses. So what I can do is um, virtual buses 3 and 4 control my computer audio, which is really cool. So uh, this bus goes to OBS um, and that allows you to do some really cool stuff. Uh, I'll just open up the effects uh, returns and you will see that I've got this return set up over here that says to OBS. I opened these up using this next button in the um, row of buttons that we were inspecting and this shows you the return channels. Now let's say you wanted to set up a return. It's over here. Just right click, add effect track and you can put anything on there, say some reverb. You can see it will add another send to all these different tracks and you can send anything to the reverb if you so desire. But it's also really useful in, you know, situations like, say for example, you are in Discord with your buddies and then you throw the pitch shifter on here and you just go like this. So, it's always good fun. Anyway, um, back to topic. So. Um, this is where you can see your sends and returns. As you can see, it goes. Um, this one goes to OBS, and I'm not going to need any sends or returns in this project, so I just deleted the last one. Then over here, this one's for deactivated tracks. So let's say these waterfall hats. Let's just imagine for a second that they are an incredibly CPU-hungry VST. I mean. They are hi-hats, but let's imagine for a second. So I'm just going to stop that and say, um, all right, I'm going to deactivate this track. So you select the track, hit active, and it disappears. Now it's not gone forever, it's just hidden. So if you activate this button down here, it comes back. But the nice thing about this is any VST plugin um, will not take up any RAM or CPU. So you could have your entire string library already prepared with MIDI routing for your keyboard and everything and then you can just have it in there and keep it not activated and even hidden. So that's pretty nice. And then the last button that I want to tell you about is this AB. So that will bring up a crossfade. Um, that will allow you to assign each channel to a crossfader that sits over here underneath the master bus. So, um, depending on your age, you might remember that Ableton Live was not started as a production platform necessarily, but also as a live performance tool. And um, people would root different elements in their tracks. Say, for example, you would have the drums from one track on crossfader A and B. So you would have this middle thing selected, but you could have the synths from one track on the left there and since from one track on the right so it would like this so like this and then you could do your fades like that but yeah um, I don't think I will ever DJ with Bitwig even though it probably would be a cool experience but if you ever need a crossfader that's where you find it so um, Going from this, let's make some quick adjustments to this little loop that I've got going on here. So I think the the uh, lead synth is fine, but uh, let's take a look at that percussion loop. So I'm thinking, um, as with most of the time when I'm just jamming in Bitwig, I'm in this screen. Uh, sometimes I use the arranger, but sometimes when I'm drawing down out melodies, I'm just in this screen. And I'm thinking I want to make this loop more interesting. So I'll throw some delay on here, make that a bit shorter, and then grab a pitch shifter, pitch that up a bit. Maybe make that even shorter, detune it a little bit, and then add some reverb at the end. And there you go. So that was done from the mix page. Um, and it's as you can see, it's self-contained. I'm just going to close this up. And then um, also a nice feature that I like, especially with the stock plugins that come with Bitwig, you can sometimes get these tiny displays. So I'm just going to use an EQ+. Plus put some resonance in here and then I'll use a modulator, say a random and use it to modulate the frequency. So I'll just go zip 
and uh, make that bipolar so it goes up and down and then I'll smooth that out a little bit make it a bit more contrasty and maybe also increase the Q a little bit here so yeah that's definitely added some interest now let's say I had some volume automation on this fader I would have to readjust it so what I always recommend when mixing is using the tool so as a gain stage you would have stuff similar to that in other programs but uh, I like the tool because it gives you access to quick control over stuff that you just need all the time you know swapping left right or um, you know being able to uh, change to mono um, and especially it's especially useful if you want to do some modulation on volume or automation on volume because if you automate this dial instead of that dial for subtle volume shif shifts or changes during the drop you know like maybe before the drop you want to have everything 3 dB quieter that means you won't have to automate your channels fader which is in its own way if you consider a group of instruments its own you know small master fader you know you don't really want to touch it like I'm kind of finicky about that stuff. I want to have it sit there and if I want to change something um, with the automation it's going to be in that thing, in the tool. So it's always a good uh, trick to keep in mind. So yeah, um, did I forget anything? Apart from this button, I think I talked about that. Yeah, it makes it smaller and bigger. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I think the mixer in Bitwig is super intuitive and it's a lot of fun to work with. Um, uh, this is also interesting. I think um, I almost forgot uh, because if you're in the arrange window and you want to you prefer to mix from the arrange page um, I sometimes like to do that you know you just go through the arrange page and then you have to pull up your mixer you can have both in the same view so you just click this show mixer panel and it will give you like a miniature version and uh, yeah whenever you want to say monitor a particular channel um, say we want to monitor a little master channel with the group I'll just throw an oscilloscope on here and open that up and then you can detach it and pin it or maybe resize it a little bit have that over here and go back to your mixer so yeah um, it's a very fun environment to work with. It, you know, it looks blinky and blinky stuff is appreciated. It's always appreciated, at least for me. Anyway, so uh, yeah, cheers for watching uh, the second part of um, this little introduction to Bitwig. Um, I'll probably talk about audio next or maybe do some sidechain compression stuff because you know sidechaining is always an interesting topic and it's it, different how the different programs approach it differently and there's several reasons or several um, different approaches in Bitwig that you can do and I think that's gonna be uh, an interesting topic of discussion. Apart from that as it comes to the Project Vault series um, I've got stuff lined up I've been <coughs> curating which sorts of projects I want to line up and uh, yeah, um, it's coming soon. So yeah, cheers for watching. Run cut out.